In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use a sphere reflection capture, specified cube map as a reflection map for our movable kind of objects. So at the moment, if we use this sphere reflection capture as a captured scene, and we just jump to our post process and turn off our screen space reflections, if we select this, and quickly build that. We'll notice how it's not creating anything to reflect. And that's because most of our objects in this scene are movable. We're using movable lights and so on. So because everything's dynamic, um, it means that this reflection capture isn't going to actually capture any of the scene. So we're going to end up with a reflection like this where we've just got our environment, our um, sky map. Um, even if we did have reflections that could update every frame. You do have the option to do that um, using a, a cube reflection, I think it is. Um, it's far too, and planar reflection. Um, it's far too expensive to use um, on in any kind of usable format for a game anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate maps, um, cute different kind of cube maps to use on our reflection sphere using this specified cube map option. Now obviously by default you can't use the reflection actor itself to generate these. What we have to do, if we go to search classes, search for cube, we could drop in scene capture cube. Now what this will do is capture from north, south, east, west and kind of up and down as well and generate us a map for that. Now as you can see by default it has this texture target and there's nothing actually in there at the moment and that's because we need to make a um, texture for it to capture to. So you can see in my textures folder, I've made a cube reflection maps folder and I'm just going to right click, go to um, materials and textures and I'm going to make a cube render target. And then I'm going to drop that into this slot here. And you can see straight away it updates with our camera view. Um, now if we select our reflection probe, we want to drop that into here but obviously, if I try and do that, it won't let me do it. Now, the reason we need to, um, the reason it won't let you do that is because this isn't actually a specific texture yet. Um, this will update on the fly as I rotate my camera around. And if I kind of move it, just move it right over here, and you can see that updates. So it's not actually output, this is a specific kind of texture map, which is what we want. In order to output it as a texture map, if we right click, go to create static texture, then that will now, and let's rename that as well, that will now jet out, output that, so, proper texture. So if we select our reflection probe, make sure we're on specified cube map, and just drag that onto there. Um, we'll leave this in the scene for now, but now this is going to Um, use this reflection map to put reflection onto our objects. And you can see compared to the screen space reflection ones, it's obviously a lot more um, clear. There's not really any kind of noise in it either. We can obviously still use those. So if we just come back over to our post process tab, put our intensity back up there. So we can use a kind of mix of the two. We're just gonna leave them off for now, just so you can see um, exactly what that reflection probe is doing. So if we just select this asset here, we'll set this to movable and just try moving this around. So what you can see at the moment is, although this object can move and the, um, the full reflection is in there, what's not happening is the reflection isn't changing at all. So even if I move this kind of way over here, all we're gonna see is the edge of that map. Now, let's just delete that old one. Um, obviously the reason for this is because it's only using this one reflection capture. So what we need to do is create more of these. So in order to do that, if I just clone him and stick him over there, we can see at the moment he's still using this same specified cube map. So we're going to need to make more of these cube maps. So let's just drag this guy over here. And you can see it's generated a different reflection map already.
Um, one thing you might want to do is kind of turn off things like this. Um, and when you're happy with your angle for that one, we'll just do create static texture again. Again, I'm going to rename that. And I'll select my reflection probe and I will drop that one into there. So let's turn our sphere back on. Um, the other thing we'll need to do is because the radius of each one of these is very large and also I haven't rebuilt it, so let's do that first. So, so we can see now what we probably need to do first is actually set our radius here. So I'm just going to bring that right down um, because basically it's going to take when it's within the radius of this one, it's going to use that one completely. And when it's in the radius of this one, it's going to use that one completely. Um, and when they overlap, it's going to do a mix of the two. I'm going to maybe put these down to say 750. And now we can see we're actually getting different reflection levels based off where this is positioned. And obviously these are nice and cheap as well because um, it's just using a all it's using is using a standard map to generate the reflection. It's not having to do it in real time or anything like that. So it's relatively cheap. So obviously depending on the size of your scene you might actually have quite a few of these. I don't need to clone that. Let's clone the reflection sphere and drag that around to here. And we'll take this guy over here. And we can see that update. So yeah, you can say I think I'm right in the middle of some geometry there, so that's why we're getting that. I'm just going to rotate that so it's actually looking there, so that's not the problem.